Tonight, Apple TV gets a promotion, who's greener, Microsoft or Facebook, and a drone that can land on a telephone wire. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 12 for January 28th, 2014. I'm Father Robert Ballasare. Let's get right to the tech feed. Couch potatoes rejoice. Apple has added a Apple TV section to its Apple online store, promoting it from an accessory to a real product line, equal to Macs, iPhones, and iPads. The blog 9to5Mac thinks they know why. Sources claim to have seen a prototype that combines Apple TV with the Airport Express. They also confirmed a gaming focus for the next Apple TV. And finally, Apple has reportedly tested a version of the Apple TV with a built-in TV tuner that would layer an Apple user interface on top of the live television feed. It's unclear whether these rumored prototypes reflect future shipping products, according to the report. Microsoft and Facebook want to give you billions. Well, not quite, but at the Open Compute Summit in San Jose, the two data center giants shared some of their closely guarded secrets for saving billions. Yesterday, Microsoft contributed two designs from their secretive server design group to the Open Compute project. Microsoft claims that the designs have cut their server costs by 40% and dropped power consumption by 15. Additionally, Microsoft open sourced the software they built to manage those super efficient servers. Not to be outdone, just a few hours ago, Facebook detailed their efforts to build customized data centers using non-traditional server manufacturers and open source software. Combined with innovative warehouse design, these efforts have saved Facebook over $1.2 billion. Expect to see more as the data giants go head-to-head -head in Silicon Valley's favorite game, Who's Greener? A bizarre scandal strikes the Bitcoin Foundation. Vice Chairman and founding member Charlie Shrem quit today after being charged with money laundering. A Manhattan U.S. attorney charged Shrem with selling bitcoins for use in buying and selling illegal drugs on the Silk Road website. He was also accused of failing to file a suspicious activity report about the use of those bitcoins and with operating, operating an unlicensed money transmitting business. The 24-year-old faces more than 11 years in prison if convicted. Shrem is also CEO of BitInstant. Coming up, a drone that perches on a branch like a bird. How it was designed and who is using it. But first, joining us is Dana Woman, managing editor of Engadget, where she oversees all product reviews. Dana, let's talk about wearables. Today, your yes. website posted a review of the Pebble Steel Watch. We're seeing more wearables coming to market, including smart watches and smart glasses. What are some of the best features you're seeing in these new products? I think definitely the app integration is the standout feature for me. I mean, of course, there are lots of whiz-bang features that you can have. Certain watches, not the Pebble, but there are certain watches, that, let's say, let you take photos from the, from the watch, letting you feel like Dick Tracy. You can make calls using the watch. But I think the app integration is really what makes some of these devices most impressive and also most potentially useful. For instance, Pebble has a new partnership with ESPN, allowing you to glance at your wrist and see real-time scores just by glancing at your wrist. And to the extent that taking your phone out of your bag or out of your pocket is um, a chore, this is a little easier and maybe a little less distracting for the people who you're spending time with. Now, Dana, a lot of these products have shown promise, but none have really taken off in the mainstream just yet. What do you see as the turning point for wearables? I think the aesthetic component is going to have a lot to do with it. Definitely the Pebble Steel is a great start. This is more or less the original Pebble. It it's, has no additional features, no new features, but it's just a better looking, better designed product. This one comes with both metal and leather wristbands in the box. And I think that's a big step forward for people. I think people aren't going to want to wear wearables if they're not um, as good looking and as expressive as any other personal technology people might buy. I think people really want their electronics to be an extension of themselves and their sense of style. And I think the same goes for watches. They have to be fashionable. And we have seen, let's, for instance, Intel has a partnership with several fashion groups, including the department store Barney's, to help develop a more fashionable watch. And again, the Pebble Steel is also a big step in the right direction. So they just need to look better. and They need to be the sort of things people actually want to wear 24-7. Now, Dana, rumors about an Apple iWatch have been circulating for years. Do you think this will be the year that they finally ship? 
you know, I'm not a betting woman, but uh, if I did have to bet, um, I would say this might well be the year. Um, Tim Cook, uh, Apple CEO, has promised we'll see some new product categories this year. I can't imagine that wearables is not one of those categories. And this is definitely the right time. I think you can definitely see wearables heating up this year, both with, you know, with Google Glass. Google's big on it already. Sony is on its second generation of smartwatches. Samsung is in the space. So it's not such an, a nascent category anymore. It's still sort of a uh, an early category, but progress has been made there. And I think it is might be time for Apple to step in and show what it's got. Well, thanks, Dana. It's been great speaking with you. You can see what Dana's group is doing at Engadget.com. And we leave you with this. Joins, drones can be noisy little buzzing buggers while they hover overhead, but this drone is different. It can perch on a branch or power line, then watch you silently with the engines off for hours. To accomplish this, the legs are designed directly from the gripping action of a bird's feet. It uses a powerful electric motor and sharp claws to grip surfaces so it can stay put on its roost. This is quite the feat because the drone actually has to stall just before touchdown. And just in case the creepy factor isn't high enough, this drone has the ability to walk short distances and explore indoors. Vishwa Robotics in Massachusetts designed the bird legs for use on small drones by the United States Air Force. Mimicking animal movements in robots is quite common. We've already seen animal-like robots designed by Boston Dynamics, now owned by Google. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash tn2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific. I'm Father Robert Balasair. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.